Hello everyone. I welcome you all to Simply Learn. Bias and variance are important part of statistical analysis and is used in several places such as research, machine learning, data science, data analytics and many more. It has a wide range of applications. So, in this video we will discuss what is bias and variance and we'll try to understand it with the help of an examples. So, without further delay, let's move ahead. What is bias in statistics? Bias in statistics is a term that is used to refer any type of error that we may find when we use the statistical analysis. We can say that it is an estimator of a parameter that may not be confusing with its degree of precision. The reasons for this bias may be that the method by which the data is collected may be faulty or the way the question is phrased may be not accurate. Let's see what are the types of biases. The first one is the measurement bias. Measurement bias refers to any systematic or non-random error type that occurs in the collection of data in a study. Another term that is used for this type of bias is the detection bias. This difference in observation might be because of an unseen reasons. Some of them can be the error that happens while recording the data or the leading questions that follows after the data. The error can also occur because the respondents gave the false answers. Suppose you conduct a survey to determine whether or not someone voted for President Obama. Some may have voted for him, but the way the question was put confused the respondents and they answered wrong. In this case, the measurement bias can occur. The next type of bias is the selection bias. When you choose your sample or data incorrectly, selection bias occurs. There can be many reasons for this, but the most common reason is when the people Try to work with the data that are easily available. And because of that, the respondents gave the false response. Let's try to understand this concept with the help of an example. Suppose you are conducting a poll to determine how people feel about the current ruling government. You have gathered all the information that you need. Unfortunately, many of them say that Twitter is the primary source for the information. Now, social media is not considered trustworthy because it is in public opinion, but their friends' opinion. As a result, this type of data can be classified as a traditional selection bias, easily accessible but not for unrepresentative and specific subsets of the overall population. The next type of bias is the self-selection bias. Self-selection bias occurs when the respondents are allowed to decide entirely for themselves whether they want to participate in the survey or not. The reasons for this error may be same that the data may be collected which are easily available. Let's try to understand this type of bias with the help of an example. Suppose you want to assess a program for improving the eating habits of the shift workers. You put up posters where many workers night shifts and invite them to participate. However, those who sign up may be different from those who don't. They may be more health conscious to be with, which is why they are interested in a program to improving eating habits. If this was the case, it wouldn't be fair to conclude that the program was effective or not. In this case, a self-selection bias occurs. Recall bias Recall bias occurs when respondents' recollection of events is inaccurate or incomplete. It's especially problematic when it comes to retrospective service question. For example, suppose you are asked for a football match that happened 3 years back. Now, you may remember the goals and the good moments of the football match and but might not be able to recall the bad moments or the fouls or the mistakes that happened in that match. So, if you try to guess work here, in this case, a recall bias can occur. Another one is the observer bias. When a researcher subconsciously projects their expectation onto the research, this is known as the observer bias. In this case, the beliefs or expectation of an observer can influence the data that is collected for the study. Let's try to understand this observer bias with the help of an example. Suppose there is a certain news channel. Now, in the race of TRP, certain news might not be accurate or maybe even false. But to prove his point, he may try to prove that this news is correct and the data that are given are accurate. In this case, the observer, which is the news channel, is trying to force his opinion on the data. And in this case, the observer bias can occur. So, with this, we have discussed all the types of biases with the help of an example. 
If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So, what is statistics? Statistics is a science concerned with developing and studying methods for collecting, analyzing, and interpreting the empirical data. Statistics is a highly interdisciplinary field. Research in statistics finds applicability in virtually all scientific fields and research questions in the various scientific fields. In developing methods and studying the theory that underlies the methods, statisticians draw on a variety of mathematical and computational tools. Now, let's discuss about some of the important terms related to statistics. The first one is mean. The mean or the average is the most popular and well-known measure of central tendency. It can be used with both discrete and continuous data, although use is most often with the continuous data. It is the average of all the set of values that are considered. To understand better, let's take an example. Suppose we have a class whose students have obtained the following marks out of 50 in mathematics. Here are the following marks. So, to find the mean of these marks, We'll add all the marks and divide by the number of marks there are. So we have the total of 12 marks. So the mean of these number are 32.8. The next term we are going to discuss is median. The median is a middle score for all the set of data that had been arranged in order of magnitude. The median is less affected by the outliers and skewed data. In order to calculate the median, suppose we have the following data below. So, these are the marks that we took in the previous example. We'll first arrange these marks in the ascending order. So, to find the median, we'll find the middle point of the two middle terms in the given data. So, here the two middle terms are the 6th and the 7th term, which is 32 and 35. So, adding the 32 and 35 and dividing it by 2, we'll get 33.5. So, what can the median tell you? The median provides a helpful measure of the center of the data set. By comparing the median of the mean, you can get an idea of the distribution of the data set. When the mean and the median are the same, the data set is more or less evenly distributed from the lowest to highest values. The next term is mode. The mode is the most frequent score in our data set. So suppose we have this following example. Here you can see the mark 70 is occurring three times. So this is our mode. Now that we have discussed all the terms related to statistics, let's move on to standard deviation. So, what is a standard deviation? The statistics, a standard deviation is a statistics that measures the dispersion of a data set relative to its mean. The standard deviation is calculated as the square root of variance by determining each data point's deviation relative to the mean. If the data is close together, standard deviation will be small. And if the data is spread, then the standard deviation will be large. Let's understand these points with the help of a bell curve. A bell curve's width is defined by its standard deviation, which is calculated as the level of variation of the data in a sample around the mean. One standard deviation away from the mean in either direction on the horizontal axis accounts for some around 68.8% of the people in this group. Suppose a 34.8% one on the left side and a 34.1 on the right side. Moving two standard deviation away from the mean should include 95% of the total data. Moving three standard deviations away from the mean should represent 99.7% of the total data. While interpreting a bell curve, the points nearest to the center of the bell curve are those which are most likely to occur, whereas the points closest to the left and right edges are the outliers. Bell curves are used across the wide variety of disciplines including finance and economics, social science and the natural science. Standard deviation is often denoted by the Greek letter word sigma. So, now that we know what is a standard deviation, let's see how we can calculate the standard deviation. So, to calculate the standard deviation, we have this formula. This is the under root of x minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1 where x is the value in the data set, x bar is the mean of the data set, and n is the number of data points in the data.
Now let's understand the significance of standard deviation. To get the insights on a large data set, you need the standard deviation. Suppose you are the owner of a car company where you manufacture the car parts. And you want to keep check on the accuracy of the diameter of the car parts that are being manufactured in your company. Standard deviation can be very helpful in this. You can calculate the deviation from the mean of the car parts that are being manufactured. The second example you can think of is the spread of the data such as in case of house price or the average income levels in the US mortgage through the standard deviation. Now, this is all about the theoretical aspect of the standard deviation. Now let's learn how you can calculate the standard deviation. To calculate the standard deviation, we have taken this example. This is the marks of 6 students out of 100, 73, 11, 49, 35, 15 and 27. Now the first step is to find the mean of the given data. So to find the mean as we have learned in the previous slide, you just have to add all the marks and divide by the total number of data. So here the mean is 35. Now the second step will be to calculate the square of the difference between each score and the mean. So we got the mean as our 35 and we will subtract the marks with the mean. When we divide 35 from 73, we will get the answer as 38 and squaring the 38 we will get the answer as 1444. In a similar manner, we have calculated the marks minus mean whole square for all the cases. You get 576, 196, 0, 400 and 64. Now that we have all the data, we just need to put the data in our formula. So the formula was under root marks minus mean whole square divided by total observations minus 1. Here the marks minus mean whole square will add all the data and will divide it by the total observations that are 6 minus 1. So this is the standard deviation we will get as a 23.15. Now you might be wondering. Why we have calculated the standard deviation? What is the use of the standard deviation? So the standard deviation of 23.5 signifies that the performance of the students are not on the same level. They are deviating all over the place. Now that we have learned about the standard deviation and have seen how to calculate the standard deviation by taking an example, let's move further and learn about variance. So what is a variance? You can say variance is the square of the standard deviation. It is a statistical concept whose purpose is to measure the dispersion of observation around the mean or the average value. Variance tells the degree of spread in your data set. The more spread the data, the larger the variance is in the relation to the means. And you can see with the graph. Our central line this mu is the mean and on the either side of the mean, you can see the spread of the data. The major difference between the standard deviation and the variance is that standard deviation is expressed in the same units as the original values. Suppose exact meters. Variance is expressed in much larger units, example meter squared. Since the unit of variance are much larger than those of a typical value of a data set, it's harder to interpret the variance number accurately. That's why standard deviation is often preferred as a main measure of variability. So to calculate the formula, we just have to square the formula that we have seen in the standard deviation. So, the formula of the variance is sigma x minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1, where x is the value in the data set, x bar is the mean of the data set, and n is the number of data points in the data. Let's see some example where variance is used in the real life. In a real life situation, managers can take suitable actions to achieve the desired objectives if there is a variation analysis of the actual performance. You can compare the variation of the performance in the different quarter against the mean of the performance of all the employees. The second example you can think of is the analysis of the performance of the different organization. So how to calculate the variance? So this is the same previous example. We have the marks of student out of 100. So the first step would be to find the mean of the given data. So as calculated before, the mean of the given data was 35. Step 2 will be to calculate the square of the difference between each score and the mean. So this is the same as the previous step we have, where we have calculated the marks minus mean whole square. The change come here. The variance formula is the square of the marks minus mean whole square divided by observation minus n. So when we add all the marks minus mean whole square and divide it by 5, 
we'll get the variance as 536. Majorly, variance is used to calculate the standard deviation since it is a square root. When we calculate the square root of 536, we'll get the answer as 23.5. It is same as the standard deviation. So you must be thinking, why does variance matter? So variance matters for two main reasons. First, the parametric statistical tests are sensitive to variance. Comparing the variance of sample helps you to assess the group differences. I hope this video was useful for you. If yes, please subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Until then, happy learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.